So I've been scouring YouTube trying to find a really good echo guide that has a ton of actually really decent tips and I honestly couldn't find one. So today that's what I'm making for you guys. 20 actually advanced and really good tips for echo that'll help you be an instantly better echo player. My name is Nate and welcome to Blizzard Guides. is sponsored by Q.GG, the best way to review VODs. I personally love VOD reviewing and Q.GG is the best way to do it hands down. It's got a ton of utilities like using the in-game viewer to view your VODs from different points of views, drawing on screens, real-time viewing with your teammates, and way more. So if you're trying to review VODs with your friends, with your teammates, or just by yourself, this is the best way to do it hands down. There are no exceptions. This video has two sections, mechanic tips, so stuff like techniques you can use and, and different ability combos, and then gameplay tips. Uh, the sections will get more advanced the further in the video that you are, and I'm going to try and keep the basic ones pretty brief, so if you think that this starts off pretty basic, it's because it's going to get more advanced later in the video, and I'll explain the more difficult things in more depth. Coming in at number one, you can actually look at the ground and put your back towards the enemy to dodge headshots. Your head hitbox becomes invisible or at least not visible to the enemy. If you are looking at the ground and facing away from them, it gets tucked behind your body's hitbox. The only issue with this is that unlike with Widowmaker or Tracer who can also do this, Echo's wings actually show up a lot more, so your total area that you can get hit in increases but your headshot critical area decreases so there's a bit of a trade-off and a bit of decision making there at number two getting killed after getting stunned is actually pretty avoidable if you preemptively look to the left or to the right of the enemy basically her head hitbox kind of jumps a bunch whenever she gets stunned more so than other heroes so if you feel like you're going to get flashed by a mccree and you just don't have any other choice look to the left or right and you'll avoid a headshot this applies to other stuns as well at number three, this one's pretty short, but you can cancel her beam ability. All you do is press the key that you use to use the beam ability again, and it'll cancel it. This is good if you can't confirm a kill with the beam and you need to use your volley or some other damage combo instead of the beam. Most players don't know this. And number four, likewise, you can also cancel her flight ability. Now, this one's actually a bit more important because Echo's kit is, you know, pretty strong and everything and her ultimate is super cool, but the real strength and the real playstyle comes from her movement. So knowing that you can cancel her flight is stupidly important and it'll be the basis of all of the other tips in this video, which is why it's its own thing. At number five, the first movement tip is that you can cancel shift immediately after using it to get some increased speed. Now, when she first came out, she actually was able to fly ridiculously fast, but that's not quite the case anymore, but you can still get pretty high momentum and I actually have a tip to get the maximum momentum every time. If you're on PC, bind your flight ability to your scroll wheel and spam it when you're using it to cancel it almost immediately afterward. There's a bit of a timing that you have to get used to, but it will basically allow you to get the maximum momentum basically every single time you use flight. At number six, to maintain your momentum while you're in the air, you actually have to look very smoothly. You can't jarringly turn because you'll lose all of your momentum. Your momentum is actually determined by the sound. Well, it's actually not determined by the sound, but you can tell how much momentum you have by the pitch of your wings. I'll play the audio cue so you know which one's faster and which one's slower. Number seven, speaking of where you look matters, Echo actually has the same effect when you're trying to do a vertical flight. So when you're trying to hold spacebar and then you press shift to fly vertically instead of horizontally, if you look upwards when you do this, you actually get less height than you would if you looked horizontally. So if you're trying to do a vertical flight, look horizontal. Even if you're not inputting the forward movement key when you're doing it, you still get more vertical movement. The reason being, Echo gets more momentum if she's flying horizontally because she falls slower than she does glide horizontally. So I think you get more momentum because of this. And so then when that translates vertically, you just go higher because you have more momentum, which I guess actually kind of makes sense, but that's pretty important. To know. At number eight, a very important technique is bunny hopping. So if you want to do a horizontal flight and you want to get more distance than you would if you just pressed shift or whatever it is on console, you actually should hold space or jump or whatever it is on console right after you press the flight key. This will allow you to get a small, very 
uh, horizontal knee distance jump at the end of your flight, which is pretty nice considering that you go faster and you move further, which is good for dodging abilities. So I thought you should know. At number nine, there's a technique that I discovered called crouch uh, horizontal movement. I, I don't have a good name for it. And I'm not that creative, but basically if you hold crouch before you fly horizontally and you can also bunny hop into this, you'll dip kind of lower and it's very unpredictable and you can actually dodge hit scan shots and projectiles way easier with this. It you, you think it wouldn't do that much, but looking from third person, it does a lot for you. So this is a technique that you should definitely employ if you're trying to dodge shots. Coming in at number 10, it actually doesn't matter which direction you move in relative to your camera, it just matters what movement keys you use. So any of the tips that I mentioned before, you can actually do sideways, you can do backwards if you just use the backwards movement key, or the leftwards movement key, or the rightwards movement key. You can do it in any direction. The only penalty you have is if you do backwards movement, you move very slightly slower than you would forward. That's just because that's how walking in Overwatch works. In Overwatch, if you're walking forwards, you move slightly faster than you do backwards. So that's the only caveat to that. But otherwise, you can fly and do crazy movement in any direction. Coming in at number 11, the only damage combo, kill combo, whatever you want to call it combo that I'm putting in this video is the primary fire, volley, and beam combo. All of the other ones you'll figure out just by playing Echo and watching people play Echo. So it's not worth me mentioning it in this video, but basically if you engage with a primary fire and then you use your volley and land just one to three of the orbs and then hold your beam key immediately after the volley is leaving your arm, you will get a crazy damage combo which will allow you to confirm the kill really quickly. The reason this works is because by the time that the bombs explode, your damage beam will also have reduced the HP of the 200 HP target to below 50%, which causes your damage beam to do 200 damage per second instead of 50 damage per second in case you didn't know how that beam worked. It's a very, very strong for finishing people that are less than 50% HP, which is why this combo works so well. Coming in at number 12, we're switching gears and going into gameplay tips. First off, just do not use your fly to engage into the fight and into the backline. This is the mistake that everybody in competitive is making right now and we'll learn pretty quickly which why it is the first gameplay tip and therefore the easiest gameplay tip. Basically, you, you just can't escape like you could with Tracer or Genji. Uh, Genji gets dash reset if he does actually get the kill and Tracer can just straight up recall. Echo has to wait 6 seconds, which doesn't seem like that much of a time in Overwatch's timeline, but it is a crazy amount of time. So you, do, you just don't want to fly in. Don't fly in. At number 13, Echo is just not a flanker. Don't flank all of the time. That's all. You, you really just have to play with your team and then push in to punish whenever there's somebody that's out of position or follow up on people that are low with your beam that does 200 damage per second without just overextending into the backline and tunnel visioning on an enemy. You just have to play like that and then you'll find that you actually get a lot more kills because Echo's actually pretty squishy and, and actually pretty decently easy to hit in certain circumstances. So if you're going in the backline, you're just going to be caught dead. So. Flanking is, is just a bad idea. Play with your team and use her to punish. At number 14, the only exception to that rule is flying behind the enemy team to a safe position. Emphasis on the safe part. The playstyle is actually more like Doomfist, and I'll talk more about that later at the end of this video, how Echo is basically just Doomfist but different. Uh, yeah, I know, that sounds weird, but whatever. Um, you should kind of just play behind the enemy team and then drop down onto them and try and pick up a kill and then fly out. That also works really well, but you got to mix it up a bit like you would with any playstyle. But this does also work really well, and it is definitely a valid playstyle, a valid option on maps that allow that. At number 15, one of the things that I see happen a lot with specific Echoes in competitive that I hope Echoes will learn how to mitigate is the fact that they'll start off getting tons of frags and getting tons of picks and then slowly but surely the enemy team will figure out that the Echo is killing people out of position and they'll play tighter and then suddenly the Echo just stops getting kills. Now this does happen and there's no way to just keep getting kills like that and so what you have to do is adapt your playstyle to focus on tanks. Echo is actually really, really, really strong against tanks. 
Whenever a shield is below 50% HP, her beam also does 200 damage per second against the said shield that's below 50% HP. So if you see cracks on a Reinhardt shield or a Risa shield or whatever barrier, it will do 200 damage per second because that means it's below 50% HP. So what you should do if you cannot get frags because people are not playing out of position is use your volley on the shields, use your beam on the shields and harass the enemy tanks into playing out of position. You can do this relatively safely by flying above the enemy team if they don't have any hit scan that's landing shots on you or you can do it from an off angle by flying and gliding to like high ground that's on the left or the right and this is also pretty easy because you have high ground and the enemy hit scan can't hit you if you're on high ground this is a very very good play style and i see it working more and more in competitive so this is definitely an option if you cannot get frags at number 16, we're going to talk about her ultimate finally. The best heroes to pick with her ultimate are always high burst heroes that can get good kill combos and people with low cost ultimates. So that would mean heroes like Doomfist who have high burst kills or Reinhardt who can get his ult really fast. Tracer, McCree, Anna, Baptiste are also all very good choices. Basically, Echo really doesn't provide much value if you can't get her ultimate because if you think about it, if you transform into a Zarya, it's just like you went into the hero select screen and picked Zarya. There's a very few cases where picking a different hero in a specific fight will provide much value, which I will actually talk about. But basically, you just want to be able to get many ultimates. So if you play Reinhardt, it's not unlikely that you'll get two or three or four or five ultimates. And if you're on Tracer and you get Nanode, dude, you'll get like eight or nine ults. It's, it's ridiculous. That's when Echo's ult get value. Not whenever you pick Zarya and, and you're 0% charge and you're trying to get your ult and you can't get your ult or you pick D.Va and there's nobody to micro missile because they have double shield and then you don't get self destruct. It, it just, it's a mess. Pick heroes that can get their ultimate quickly and that provide value through high burst combos like Doomfist. So if you transform into Doom above the enemy team and you charge your punch and land and get a kill, slam, uppercut, get your ult, ult on somebody, to, you know, that's a crazy good play. That's, a, that's a, obviously a really good choice. But that's because he has high burst and a low cost ultimate. So that's the kind of heroes that you should be looking for. But at number 17, let's change the pace and change up and lie about all of that info that I just gave you because there are actually situations where picking a high cost, very difficult to charge ultimate or maybe a hero that can't get a lot of kills is a good idea. Examples including whenever your team loses a tank and you need a shield tank and they don't have a Reinhardt, clone into an Orisa, that's not necessarily a bad idea if your team needs a shield. Echo is really good for changing the pace of the fight whenever you've lost a teammate that provides a good amount of value. So if your team loses your Anna and the enemy team has a Baptiste, switch into the Baptiste to heal your team. You can get your matrix really fast and then you can heal even more. It's, it's cases like that where you should transform into any hero that the enemy has has, but basically that's something you should play by ear in general pick high burst low cost ultimates but in specific cases where your team has a specific deficit you can fix by changing you should go for that coming in at number 18 there are actually a few special cases heroes i guess i'll call them i don't know heroes that are actually really good ideas to transform into even though their ults might not necessarily be super fast to charge and those would be anna baptiste mercy and reinhardt the reason being anna baptiste and mercy specifically those three heroes have abilities that provide instantaneous value for example anna's nade baptiste's immortality field and mercy's res if you can like transform into anna above the enemy team and then use your nade to anti three to four people on the enemy team it's basically a guaranteed win for a fight if if your team doesn't have a defensive ult and you transform him to baptiste and you use immortality field bam you saved your team from a zarya grab or, or an ult like that and then for example like with mercy she's a bit more intended for people that don't have a crazy big uh hero pool if you lose your team's reinhardt and you can't play a shield tank sometimes it's not a terrible idea to go Mercy and Rez your Reinhardt, though I wouldn't recommend this because it requires that you coordinate your team to help you get the Rez and your Reinhardt may have died out of position. So that one's a bit more iffy. And then finally, the, the Reinhardt case, you can actually use Reinhardt to block the enemy Rhine Shatter if your team loses your tank or you just don't have a shield in the beginning. If you, if you block that slam, that's a really high value thing. Even if you don't get a good shatter off, that's still more valuable. But with that said, you can get like two or three shatters. So if you do block the slam, just go for a shatter right after you block it. And chances are you'll probably get it. That's actually a pretty common Reinhardt technique. So if you're like in any rank below masters, this will easily work.
And at number 19, I do want to quickly mention that the Ultimate has a crazy long range that I don't think really people have tried out and seen the extent that you can go with this Ultimate. So you like for example if you, if you don't want to ult in the los of the enemy team because you're afraid they're going to kill you then you can ult from a very safe distance far away and then just immediately go out of line of sight and then engage because you have like 15 seconds of being transformed so you'll lose about five seconds to engage but if you're gonna die if you ult an los then don't ult an los and do it from far away that's like also a very viable option so i do want to mention that but it does require that you have the game sense and knowledge to know that you can actually get in before they start running away from the glowing cloned person and last but not least, I just want to add a minor footnote that will make sense to just a few sets of players and people that understand the game really well, therefore that's why it's the last thing in the list. But basically, I want to talk about how Doomfist and Echo's playstyles are basically the same and how you can apply most of Doomfist's mechanics and playstyle to Echo. Basically, if you take a look at her primary fire, it's very similar to Doomfist where it does the bulk of the damage of the hero, but the actual kit comes from her abilities just like with Doomfist. So if you're trying to get in and you don't really understand where you should be engaging from and what types of fights that you should be taking, just take a good look at Doomfist. Their kits are basically the same. They just do very different roles, but similar playstyles. That's why Doomfist would be good against tanks, but Echo wouldn't be good against brawling against tanks like Doomfist can get in to a fight and then get out. Echo really can't do that whenever they have a very, very tanky composition. Likewise, Doomfist can work really, really good against squishies, but Echo does it way better at range. So that's a bit where their difference comes from, but they do the same things for the team. So if you wonder where Echo is going to be played and what maps, just look at Doomfist. If you're wondering what cops, just look at Doomfist. That's all this point is, is that Echo and Doomfist are very similar heroes and that if you want to learn a bit about the hero, take a look at Doomfist. Anyway, that's all I have for today. This whole script was actually improv completely. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I, I think it was pretty good. I, I'm just trying to learn how to improv stuff instead of read a script because I feel like I, I'm, I got a more natural style and I started out re writing scripts and they sucked and go watch like one of my first videos I uploaded. Go watch my like three tips to be a better tank video from a bajillion years ago. And it, it's so bad, dude. So I figured like the next improvement would be improving scripts and be a more natural talker. So I'm going to be a more natural talker. Um, I'll also keep you guys a little bit more updated in the outros since I'm not uploading like these guide videos quite as much. Basically what happened, I'm in university now and COVID-19 made everything super, super weird. And also university is kind of busy and I'm, I don't know, I, I'm kind of struggling a little bit. Uh, so like, I guess, you know, school takes priority over YouTube. Uh, but I, I, that's not to say that I don't care about YouTube or anything like that. I, I've been dying to upload more guides and I've been writing a lot of guides. I just haven't gotten around to voicing them and editing them because I want them to be higher quality than they were before. Cause like, I'm proud of these new guides that I'm making, but not the old ones. But yeah, basically that's all for today. Uh, check out the sponsor in the link in the description down below. They're awesome. I really do actually love them and I use them before. Also check out our discord, our Instagram, our Twitter, uh, subscribe, like the video. Don't cough on people. Uh, but yeah, my name is Nate and this was Blizzard Guides.